Welcome back, friends, to the T1 Models A10 EDF Conversion. This is Dave down in the basement uh, bringing you installment, I believe, number five, the wings. Uh, this one may run a little longer, uh, so be prepared. I know most of my, my videos are short, right around eight or nine minutes, uh, but there are a few things that deserve some extra attention in this. So we're going to start out here with the aileron and the speed brake or butterfly brake. Um, so let's get to it, folks. Now, as I mentioned earlier, my aircraft came with the installed light wiring and uh, I bought the harnesses. So the first thing you're going to want to do is run the long harness through the wing because uh, you're going to need it if you have it. Uh, that'll be the first thing. Uh, these are your brakes, your landing gear, and of course your wires for your lights. So that's what these four are. So check your wiring. You're going to want to get it up in the wing and get it up as close to the wing tube and the spar so it's up out of the way as possible. Uh, and now we'll, we'll get to it. Your very farthest out servo install is going to be the butterfly or the, the speed brake. You're going to have to do this after the aileron installation or I can tell you it's just not going to come together. Um, what will happen is it will flop and you'll have trouble getting it to align correctly for whatever reason. It, it just has to have the stabilization from the aileron servo first. So we'll come to it. The directions show the proper hardware. This is an L bracket and it was an L bracket. Uh, once again, I had to add the washers that are required. Uh, and by the way, you will need eight washers per servo. That's 64 washers for just the wings. So those packages that I had mentioned of three millimeter washers, are they come in sets of 25. So at a minimum, you're going to need four boxes for this build. Um, anyhow, you will go ahead. You're going to want to install your L brackets. That was pretty straightforward. I didn't have a lot of trouble with that. Um, putting on your arm, pretty straightforward also. Not a lot of issues. There was almost no space at all in your armature. Now, the one question I had because of the really deep uh, camber that's in this wing, in case anybody has any questions, obviously, huge camber in this wing. So... When you're lining up your aileron underneath, uh, what I did is under here, I felt it until you could feel it start to separate where this part of the speed brake section comes out. And I made that even with the wing. And that was what I did to make the aileron level across. So if there's any question about that, that was how I did my setup. So coming back to it, You'll use your standard hardware that's supplied. You're going to want to make sure that you have a nice straight uh, alignment. Get your servo lined up, of course, using your one-inch arms. Now, what I found, I had to take that small section out in order to get the proper amount of travel. You may or may not have to, depending upon what hardware you're going to use. And yes, your servo will go in uh, shortwise, so your throw will be from this end. Uh, that was pretty much it for this, of course, and I bundled my wires and tucked them in there up here. Then, once that section was done, I moved on to the speed brake. Now, little <laughs> piece of caution. Be very, very careful when you drill your holes for your screws to mount these with. Um, if you are not, the wing is really not very far underneath those mounts. I can promise you, you will put your little three millimeter drill or 2.5 millimeter drill right down through the wing and you'll have these two perfectly little holes, you know, out the other side of your wing. Uh, so be very gentle when you're drilling out your screw holes for your mounts. Uh, moving on, <laughs> the butterfly servo, as you can see, mounted and we are in the right wing in case there's a question, you use your T-mounts, same thing. Your 
push rod for your your speed brake is already pre-installed. You don't have to do anything with this. So the only question you're going to have is once it's open is how far and what your opening is going to be. And then you'll have to adjust your servo accordingly. Now, as you can see in here, there are a lot of hinge points, a lot of moving parts, because obviously the aileron is still capable of moving even with the speed brake open. Uh, it doesn't move a ton, but it will move. So I have mine on a uh, two position switch. So you literally, it's either open or it's closed. Uh, that's just how I decided to do mine. You could probably put it on a three position and have it in a multi, uh, have it do it in a multi way. I just prefer not to. The other part of that is before you hook that servo up, ensure you know your travel on that servo. I had to go into my programming and I literally had to dial the throw back on that servo. So my throw to open this flap is that much. That's it. And you are fully open. Otherwise, you're either going to burn your servo open or up. You're going to break something. Uh, so be very, very careful to dial your throw way, way down when you first set this up and then adjust it outward accordingly. Um, or you may end up having a real issue with this later. So just some words of caution. Uh, beyond that, when your speed brake is open and your ailerons are open, I would highly recommend going through and lubricating the hinge points. Um, make sure that, of course, your screws and things are tight, but then go ahead and make sure that you put some type of, I, I use silicone just because I, it smooths it right out. Um, and that would be it. That way all of your aileron and your butterfly movement are correct or your speed brake movement. Now moving inward, we have our, they call it the inboard flap and then the outboard flap. I, in my head, this is an outboard, it's regardless. Um, again, I didn't yet, but I have to make sure my wiring is tucked in back here. I need to tie it off, I haven't done it yet. Sorry folks. Uh, again, these are the T-brackets. All of your servos in the wing are T-brackets except the aileron. So again, you know, you'll drill out your brackets to three millimeter. Same thing, please make sure you're careful when you drill down through, you don't come through the wing. Um, now, don't get fooled into thinking that with all of the amazing travel that these beautiful flaps have, which is awesome. They, I mean, they, they would come clean out to here if you could do a full travel. The call outs in the manual are 20 millimeters for, or for takeoff flap and for 40 millimeters for landing flap. And I can assure you, if you set your servos, at least based on what I am using in a one inch arm, which is what fits in here, you're gonna get exactly 20 millimeters at half flap and 40 millimeters at full flap, and that's it. You will get nothing more. Uh, I tried I tried every configuration I could get. It just doesn't happen. So don't be alarmed. Uh, your arm for this is gonna be very short. Uh, mine actually, this was just an adjustment to make sure everything came in and was firm. The other thing is you may very well have to trim a little bit of this mount this arm is really long uh, and there's no way to get it any shorter so that's the other reason this is wound up i have my arm as far back as it would possibly reasonably go but i had to create some space and depending on your hardware you may not have to i had to take about an eighth of the mount out right there in order for the arm to swing freely and unencumbered um, and once again make sure your geometry and your flap is as straight as possible. You know, measure it, whatever, and keep it straight. That way, you, you know, you have good geometry when it's down to keep them down and, and uh, have plenty of, plenty of strength. Uh, moving on to the last flap section, you're gonna have a whole big bundle of wires here. Uh, you're gonna wanna tie them off. I have them taped right now just for the purposes of this video, but all of your lighting wires, 
your landing gear wires. This is kind of the, the convergence of everything. And there's not a lot of space up underneath here between underneath your pod, your landing gear pod. So you're gonna wanna push it up, tie it off so it doesn't impede your servo. Everything else is the same. The setup for this was identical. Your rod, once again, is gonna be almost as tight as it can get. Your throws are gonna come out identical. But I also, as I did with the other one, I had to trim the mount just about an eighth. You can actually, you can probably still see my pencil mark in there um, down at the bottom of it. So that was the only modification I had to make for this to work properly. Um, otherwise, the entire assembly, this is a long process. It is not a difficult one. It is very time consuming. Please, please, please make sure you're using your Loctite. Make sure that you are pre-drilling your holes. Uh, make sure you check your geometry. Um, your flaps, especially the way they're made with the carbon fiber slides, you're gonna wanna get some type of a lubricant in there to make them slide a little easier. They were a little stiff. Uh, and if your geometry is not straight with your servo arms, it does catch and it does it will hang up. So make sure you lubricate those and keep your geometry as, as straight as possible. Um, the last thing, obviously we are here, test your gear if you can. I happen to have a, uh, a spare uh, gear controller and plugged it in and checked it. These need a lot of juice, so make sure you have a good gear controller. Um, wheels are ball bearing, the brakes worked. This is fantastic, and I actually I should have left the gear down uh, so you could see how beautiful they are and scale, and the whole mechanism comes up. I've already gone through, made sure these were tight. I've already Loctited these gear. Uh, that would be the last major component of this. If you have to take this gear pod off, there are two screws here and here, and then you have to put the landing gear up, and then there are two more that are down. Yeah, you can't quite see them, but they're underneath where the wheel is. Right at the front, it attaches to the front of the wing. That's all that holds this on. Once it comes up, this main gear door has got two pieces, two support pieces that are springs. You just simply unhook them. And then once that's off and this is undone, you can turn the whole pod assembly and it will slide off. Um, that's how I got mine off when I did it. And then you have access to everything else. So the final component uh, for this was simple. Get your wing tip out. If you have the slime lights, you just plug them in. Obviously put your tape on or whatever your heat shrink tubing to hold your lights so they don't come unhooked. And then I used uh, a little bit of E6000. Uh, the videos from Pacific uh, specify using epoxy. I would rather have something that I know is rubberized that I can take off uh, a little more easily. But E6000, when it, once it sticks, it's clear. And it ain't coming off there unless you make it come off there. So in the event this breaks, it'll be a much easier way to get that off. Um, that is also what I used on my rudders uh, for those rudder covers. Although I think I will at some point go back and replace those with screws just for ease and maintenance. Um, but I know they will pop off well enough. So that is your installation for the wing. Uh, if you have any questions, comments... Uh, things that you would like to see or need to see, um, let me know. Hit me up in the comments section. This is Dave down in the basement. Have a great day, folks.